In this video, I want to talk about a very common question that's asked to me. I'm always asked by someone who says, I have five AWS certifications and no one seems to be willing to hire me. What do I have to do? Now, I've been a career coach for about 20 years and I've helped people get tech jobs in all the biggest tech companies out there. And I keep getting this particular question. Now, every time I hear this, I typically ask the people, what certifications do you actually have and what are your goals? But I start with the certifications. And the first thing somebody tells me is I have a cloud practitioner. I have an AWS solutions architect associate. I have a SysOps associate, I have an AWS DevOps associate, and I have an AWS developer associate. The person even told me that they've done over 100 labs on the cloud, they've done labs on Linux, and they're even learning Python. So I said, it sounds like you've done a lot of work. And then I asked the person, what job is it you're actually looking for? And the person said, I want to be an AWS solutions architect. And I said, okay. So I asked the person uh, if... Uh, I could assess them. I said, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do to get that first AWS solutions architect job or a cloud architect job. I said, that's the easy part, but I need to know where you're at and I need to know where, because I know where you're going. So I need to figure out where your skills are. So I said, I'm going to ask you some basic questions. And as soon as I answer your basic questions, I'm going to help you build a get hired plan. So I started with some technical questions and I said to the person, I'm going to ask you both technical and non-technical questions that are going to be critical to the role. And the first question I asked was a very simple question. I asked the person about storage in the cloud and the data center. And I said, could you please explain block storage, object storage, and file storage to me? I said, I'd like to know how they work, the strengths and weaknesses of each type of storage and the architectural trade-offs you may face, and how these types of storage are used in cloud computing in a wide variety of environments. And the person said, I've configured these, but I don't know how to answer that. And I said, that's fine. I said, I'm gonna ask you another simple question. I said, uh, you have a host computer that needs to access a web server. What needs to occur to make that happen? And that was really asking the person about networking to see if they knew networking, because in order to design an application, you need to understand networking, a web applications, because it's gonna to have to cross the internet. And it was clear the person had absolutely no knowledge of networking, and that's okay, because we can always learn things. And then I asked a person a very basic compute question. And I said, could you tell me about the four compute options in cloud computing and the strengths and weaknesses of each approach? And again, the person said, I can't answer that question. So I said, I'm gonna ask one more question to baseline your security. And then after that, I'll get you some business questions. And I said, could you tell me how you would uh, design your demilitarized zone for a mission critical web app uh, with really critical security environments, say for a bank, for example? And the person had no idea what a demilitarized zone was or even where to begin. So I knew that person had no idea how to design any of the technology solutions they might need to be. But I also knew they were very smart and they worked very hard and they're capable because they've done a lot of things. And passing all those exams is not easy. It takes a lot of effort to work. And if you can do that, you can do a lot of other things. So I said, let's ask your basic uh, business questions. So the first question I asked to the person is, uh, could you explain the RFP process, the request for proposal process? Because that is a huge part of the AWS solutions architect job or the cloud architect job or the Azure solutions architect job. It's going to be really a critical skill. And the person didn't know what a request for proposal was. And I said, that's okay. You can always learn. You can be taught. So I said, a lot of the job is presenting to the C-suite, like the CIO, the CFO, and the CEO. So I said, I'd like to know what the C-suite's main concerns about. Could you tell me what the CIO cares about or the chief information officer versus the chief financial officer versus the chief executive officer? Because you're going to need that knowledge to have the client buy or adopt your solution. And the client had no idea what uh, the executive of the company would need. And then I said, I'm going to ask you some uh, other basic questions, I said, as a solutions architect, I need to be a solutions architect or a cloud architect, you're gonna have a lot of stakeholder management to do. I said, so could you tell me how you collaborate with stakeholders and manage stakeholders and their expectations and get their buy-in? And again, it started where the person had absolutely no knowledge. Now, here's the good news. I have a person, they're very smart, they're very motivated. It is not easy to do five certifications in 100 plus labs, but, we do have a big challenge here. 
And what happened, and I see it every day, is the person did a couple of major mistakes. The first mistake was they studied three different people's careers. Solution architecture is completely different than DevOps, and it's completely different than development, and it's completely different than uh, SysOps work. So when the person decided to basically get certified in three different people's careers or four different people's careers, what they do is they spread themselves so thin that they didn't learn anything about their career. So that was the first problem. Now the next problem is, and this is the biggest problem I see, is the person confused the AWS solutions architect role with a cloud engineering role or a cloud architect role with a cloud engineering role. And these roles are completely different from each other. So what happens is they, they now have what you call a cloud architect skills mismatch. So they, the, they need these skills and they train these skills, but they're completely different set of skills. So here's what that person needed to learn. And I see this every day and I'm gonna make sure if you're in the same situation, you get your first cloud architect job or solutions architect job. The person needed to know networking, storage, compute, the applications that drive transformation, databases, security, identity and access management. And yes, I separated that from security because it's its own discipline, as well as AI and design. So when I asked that person compute, they needed to know when they would use a virtual machine versus a container versus say application virtualization versus say function as a service. And they needed to know the strengths and the weaknesses of each approach, for example, and how they would be part of the bigger picture. Not how to configure it, that's not our job, but, but how to design it. So when we're talking about design and the knowledge and the technical knowledge of an architect, it's not how to, and I promise you can't learn it by doing a whole bunch of labs. Because I, I, I interview people that have done 10 years of cloud engineering, and they still don't know cloud architecture because it's a different job. It's being able to understand how the technology works, how the technology fits together, and how to apply that technology to apply business problems, to business problems. So if a company is saying we need to enhance productivity, how can you use that technology to enhance productivity, for example? Or if they're trying to communicate a collaborator, build a new project, what can you do to augment that project? It all starts from a business need. So instead of thinking about how you would configure IAM and the AWS Management Console, you need to be able to evaluate the architectural trade-offs between say role-based access control and attribute-based access control and context-aware IAM and the impact of these architectural choices on the business. So that's the architecture piece. So the cloud architect role, the AWS solutions architect role, all these jobs are about planning, not doing. So these are jobs where you have to learn your planning skills. You have to learn the underlying technology and how it works and how it fits together. Now this is gonna take deep training and study because you can't learn it by building it. And if you could, other uh, people that build houses would be asked to design skyscrapers and business, but note they ask for an architect who was taught to design versus an engineer or a construction person who was taught how to build. Now, because we talked about the technical things you need to learn, that's not enough for the job because the AWS solutions architect job is about two thirds business. You're going to be with clients all the time. It's a customer facing role, just like a cloud architect role in most cases. So the first thing that AWS solutions architect is going to need is business acumen. Because if you're there as an AWS solutions architect, your job is to improve your client's business by leveraging technology. And you can't improve business if you don't know business. Now you need to have CXO relevance because if you're gonna address the CIO's concerns and you don't know what the CIO is concerned about, you can't really get your problem solved. So you need to be able to talk to the CIO and convince them that it's the proper architectural solution for them. Now, another thing you're gonna need is executive presence, which is the ability to walk in and command the room and seem to be powerful. The other skill you'll need to learn, and this is especially appropriate to AWS solutions architects, cloud architects, Azure solutions architects, Google solutions architects are good presentation skills. And here's the reason why. In these jobs, the last part of your solutions architect interview was gonna be a presentation. I promise you it'll be a presentation in front of a panel in almost all companies, especially AWS and any other company that's involved in selling uh, or the architects are involved, design, present, and sell jobs. 
But it's also going to be a key component of your business. As a solutions architect, you might be doing an executive briefing, presenting to key executives. You'll be presenting at industry conferences, for example. You're going to give a lot of presentations. You're going to need strong presentation skills. And the other key component is you're going to need really good leadership skills to be an AWS solutions architect or a cloud architect. And here's the reason why. You're not going to be able to design half of these solutions by yourself or even 10% of them. You're going to need to build an architecture team for anything meaningful. Because if you're dealing with a billion dollar cloud architecture, for example, you know, it's going to take a team of architects that are going to have to coordinate this and specialty architects like network architects, security architects, IAM architects, AI architects, and a whole bunch of others, and even other technology professionals on your team. And you're going to have to lead that team. So understand that for solutions architecture or cloud architecture, business and tech, you got to have both. So then I had said to that person, I said, let's do one more thing. Let's go look at your resume. Because you have to have an AWS Solutions Architect resume, not an engineering resume. So we looked at that person's resume, and guess what? It had every buzzword. It had something called the skills section, which is common in engineering resumes, but you, can, you don't ever want it in an architect resume. And it looked exactly like an engineering resume, which if I was looking for an architect as a hiring manager, I would bypass that and I would move to more of an architecture resume to interview the person because it didn't look like they even knew what architecture actually was, let alone have the skills in architecture. So then I said to the person, I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to save this resume, but I don't ever want you to use it again. He said to me, save the resume? I'm like, why do I want to save the resume if I'm not going to use it? And I said, here's why. I said, when you have the skills, I'm going to have you create a new resume. And I want that resume to match what you know, what you can do, and what's really AWS solution architecture and cloud architecture versus cloud engineering. I said, then, two years into your career, I want you to go back and I want you to look at this first resume that you made. I said, it's going to do a lot of things. It's going to make you smile. It'll probably make you laugh. I know it did me when I did the same exercise. And it'll, real, it'll make you realize how much you've learned between what you thought you needed to know for that AWS Solutions Architect job, between what you actually needed to know. And that'll be something that'll remind you how far you've come. I did this when I started my solutions architecture career 25 years ago. Ultimately, I moved into enterprise architecture, which is where I love it, but I've still trained so many people to get their first solutions architect job. So now you've got the skills, now you've got the resume, and at this point, now it's going to be fairly easy. Because from a hiring perspective, it's almost impossible to find someone with the right skills to be an AWS solutions architect, cloud architect, security architect, enterprise architect, any architect, and here's the reason why. It's almost impossible to find someone that knows technology well and business well all in the same person. Now, the fact that there's huge demand and there's basically no supply out there, that means you're gonna be on the right side of the supply and demand curve and salaries for architects and solutions architects tend to be very well. And I'll tell you, I've enjoyed every last minute of my 25 year architect career ever since I left uh, healthcare. So I want you to get hired for your first AWS solutions architect job or cloud architect jobs. Please do this in the description of this video or the comment section, wherever my team can put it, there will be an e-guide on how to get your first solutions architect or cloud architect job. It'll list every skill you need and it will go into depth of everything. Even certifications, they're gonna build your portfolio. I just want you to have the best and it's all free. So I suggest signing up for it. And once a week I have an architecture webinar where we discuss these architecture roles, we discuss what we do in the roles, the skills that you need. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have live and free on Zoom. So uh, register uh, for it. It's in the description of this video. It's all free. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe give it a like, uh, subscribe or follow, and uh, maybe share this with someone else who you know is looking for their first AWS Solutions Architect job, Cloud Architect job, someone that's been working hard and studying and not getting to their career goals. This is Mike Gibbs and I'll be signing off for now and I hope to see you very soon in another video or a free architecture webinar. Take care.